Hey everyone, my name is Oliver Turner. I'm the Executive Vice President of Corporate Development for Corora Resources, a Western Australian gold and nickel producer, expanding production over the next several years. Uh, good to see you, Oliver. Um, look, I, I get the quarterly uh, numbers came out about a couple of weeks ago. I want to talk about Blue Sky in the future, but go and hit us with the quarterly update numbers and uh, I'll pick it up from there. Yeah, for sure. So we had uh, we put out the third quarter production numbers. We'll have uh, the financials out here in a few weeks. Uh, so it was an excellent quarter again, great third quarter. We recorded around about 40,000 ounces just under that in production, a little bit higher in sales. So that brings us year to date about 120,000 ounces. As a reminder, our guidance for the year is 145 to 160,000 ounces. So it's positioning us very well on the production basis to be well within that guidance range. Uh, so we're sitting sitting in a good position there. Uh, on the cost side, obviously, we'll be reporting third quarter cost of the financials. But again, things are looking good for us to be in our AISC guidance range for the year, uh, which is which is a good place to be. Not everybody's there. We've seen continued, obviously, input cost pressures from the labor market in Western Australia and honestly everywhere in the entire sector. But the reason why we had the upper end of that range at $1,250 US AISC was to make sure that we capture that. So we're sitting good there as well. $84 million in cash. Uh, cash is growing, uh, which is great, um, and uh, financially doing very well. Good. Okay. Things are not doing so well. Share price across the board. Precious metal companies are just not seeing the love out there at the moment. And sideways, we've said it before, sideways is, is the new up. Um, but people are going to get tired of waiting soon. They're going to think, well, maybe I can deploy my capital elsewhere. So, And that's in the backdrop of people telling us that gold is... Uh, is a great investment. Gold is is kind of anti theat It's uh, as a store of value. It's the way where people always invest their capital. So I'm confused. I think the market's confused about should we be sticking around for the gold market to recover? Yeah, that's a great question. And and I think there's sort of two ways we can split that up. So when it comes to gold versus gold mining equities, those are two different worlds, right? One is the actual commodity itself. The other one is the people that extract that commodity and and you and are supposed to be levered to that commodity. So when the commodity does well, you're supposed to have a multiple on that return uh, when you when you invest in the mining equities. Now, what we've seen over these last couple of years, which has obviously been a very challenging global financial environment with interest rates skyrocketing, inflation out of control. Uh, we've seen gold bullion perform exceptionally well. In fact, it's performed far better than it traditionally does in any raise rising environment. Uh, and that's been really, really good to see. Now, as a reminder, there is a cost to holding gold bullion and gold bullion does not yield anything. So when and, and when rates rise, investors naturally go over to treasuries where you can get a risk-free return. And you typically don't hold things like gold because it doesn't yield and you have the opportunity cost of not holding those uh, those strong financial assets. So gold's done very, very well, the bullion side of things. Uh, obviously, we've got an interesting um, and uh, you know challenging uh, macro environment from an, from an econ- economist perspective. We've got a very challenging geopolitical environment. And you know, when you talk about the Fed and rates, they're certainly, you know, their heads are banging against the ceiling here. Everybody's screaming for rates to come down and they can't realistically push rates much higher at this point in time. So that sets up a very good environment for gold because gold bullion, again, performs very well in a rate declining environment because the, the opportunity cost of holding it is decreased. So we're setting ourselves up here for a very interesting gold bullion potential rally. Of course, there's nobody on earth that can predict the, uh, predict the price of gold with any reasonable amount of accuracy, but all indicate, indications are on a probability basis that it's looking very good. Now, that's gold bullion, the mining equities. And I'm going to talk about an interesting new way to own gold bullion that's kind of in the works that's sort of more frictionless in a second. The mining equities, simply put, have been in the dumpster with just about every sector in this economy right now. Um, it's, a, it's a fearful economy. You've seen unparalleled outflows from stocks across the board over the last couple of years into treasuries. If you're a large fund manager, a large uh, generalist fund manager that's managing hundreds of billions of dollars you cannot miss the boat on some of these yields that you're getting on U.S. Treasuries. You see that ac- across the world, everybody is owning those, and inflows have been absolutely massive. Now we're starting to see some of those those funds be extracted. Um, although if you've done it too early, you've, you've also lost in some so some of those yields. We're seeing some of it extracted and going to other sectors. It has not flowed down to our wonderful, and I don't say this in a mean way, little sector in the mining sector, which in terms of the investable capital pool is pretty small on a global scale. 
Well, what's really interesting there is that's the opportunity. And that's always been the opportunity in our sector. It is a cyclical industry. When times are great, it moves incredibly fast and violently upwards. When times are bad, it's challenging. And we've certainly been in some of those challenging times for a while now. What you want to do in this environment, if you've decided that you want to be a gold mining equity investor, you want some of that leverage to things shifting quickly. And we can talk about this. You know, This can happen in a matter of weeks, if not days sometimes, that initial leg up where you see those 6 7 8% moves day after day after day, which is you know phenomenal returns, is you want to start picking businesses that you know have the potential to survive a tough environment if it goes on for a, per- a longer period but also are going to be the first port of call when things start to move in the opposite direction. Now, the old cliche, a rising tide lifts all boats, is certainly valid in the mining sector. And when it pulls back out, all those boats sink back down. Well, what ends up happening in that rising tide environment is the best names are the first port of call, and they're the ones that rise up further. So that's where you want to be positioning yourself if your gold mining equity investor is into those kind of names. And we definitely have one of those names at Quora. Last thing I want to mention quickly before you jump in with your next question here is on that uh, on the gold bullion side of things. And I'll just do a little plug for, you know, there's no affiliation here for the World Gold Council, something that they're putting together um, that's really quite interesting. So at this point in time, if you want to own physical gold, it is challenging to do so. Um, if you want something where you can actually go to the bank and you say, I want to exchange my ownership for physical gold and I can take a bullion bar home and store it in my safe or store it in the safe in the bank. It is not a frictionless transaction. There's lots of paperwork. There's a cost to holding physical gold. It's not something that most people, quite frankly, on earth do. Uh, well, what the Royal Gold Grants is working on is something called gold 24-7. And the principle behind that is something that has high integrity. So it's gold that's backed by the blockchain. So you actually have your gold bullion bar that you're buying or a piece of that bar that's tracked instantaneously. It's very accessible where you can trade this on a platform, a digital platform. But you can also buy fractions of an ounce. So we're talking about if you want to buy two grams of gold or you want to buy three grams of gold and you can trade it like a normal stock. So the idea here is for the average investor, which is the majority of us, you'll be able to trade in and out of something that's backed by physical gold entirely and exchangeable for physical gold should you choose very, very easily. We're not talking about a gold ETF, which isn't entirely backed by physical gold. There's always a lagging effect there. Um, so that's something that's in the works right now. And I think it's going to be interesting for a lot of people. But when it comes to mining equities, pick strong, stable, cash flow generative businesses that have the ability to endure this period of time that don't need to raise money, that when times do turn, uh, can certainly be the first port of call for sophisticated investors. Right. So a lot of choices then, what we're saying. There's a, there's a, there's a blended portfolio approach to investing in gold, which in all accounts there you're saying is worth doing gold still holds its value for investors is that what you're saying uh, in terms of gold bullying it certainly has and if right. you want leverage if you want leverage to a shift in global pools of capital moving into the mining sector remember the way that every sector in the world works is capital moves from here to here to here to here depending on the investing environment right we saw that uh certainly in in 2021 and 2022 when all the FANG stocks were absolutely ripping regardless of valuation levels. So if you want to be part of, let's call it the party, when gold comes back back into vogue in terms of gold mining equities and that capital, just a little bit of it needs to come into our sector and you get outsized returns in the sector, you got to invest in mining stocks and you got to invest in, in you got to be willing to hold them through the challenging times because when it turns, it turns. Yeah. Quickly. It turns very quickly for those who are, I've got their house in order, have, you know, have, have got things ready to go, primed and pumped. And you've talked about it's going to step change in your organization's ability to take advantage of um, your assets. So let's let's talk about that. Um, uh, resource and um, reserve updates, still time for the end of this year? Yeah, absolutely. So Beta Hunt, as everybody here knows, your audience knows our assets very, very well, uh, is, is our flagship asset. That's been the, the focus of all of our attention really over the last two years. Uh, we've been plowing exploration dollars into there and, and basically returning resource ounces, M&I resource ounces at $35 an ounce Australian. I would challenge uh, a lot of people try to find a, a producer that's adding ounces more cheaply than that. The return on invested dollar there has been phenomenal. In just the last three years, we've grown it from 400,000 ounces to 2.4 million ounces, all while mining, roughly speaking, about 400,000 ounces over the last several years. So it is, you know, for all intents and purposes, 2.8 million ounces. We will have another update coming out later this year. 
Uh, and let's just say it's going to be positive. People will be happy. Um, the drill bit has been working and been producing just like it has in past years. Uh, and that's something where we're continuing to add two things, resource value in the ground. But most importantly, look, we're a growing large scale junior producer. Uh, we're adding mine life. We're adding those out years. Uh, we're adding uh, ca future cash flows. Uh, and we'll continue to do that next year with another exploration program. Right. And you, you said earlier, right, you are growing your cash reserves um, at, at the moment. Um, how, how, do, how do you kind of see that pl panning out for, for next year as you kind of look to kind of grow, grow these assets, make yourself more attractive, I suspect? Because I, I, it's a ton of question I ask of um, mining uh, C-suite, which is, look, you, you mustn't keep just plowing the money back on the ground and kind of forget about your shareholders. It's like, where's the accretive growth here? Where is the return on capital investment going to come from? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously in the mining sector, you need to keep investing in your assets because as soon as you run out of future growth opportunities, your stock has a, your, your, your entity, your business has a finite life and you're just getting closer to that, the end of that life and your valuation decreases appropriately. So, or, or I should say correspondingly. Uh, so what you need to do is it, in our business, you need to keep exploring to find more ounces to build out your mind life. And look, Beta Hunt is just, again, we keep coming back to this asset because the speed at which we've grown this resource base and expanded this mind life at such a low cost has been absolutely, I've never seen anything like it in my career. And I covered mining stocks for seven years as a research analyst. So it's it's been it's been uh, incredible to be part of. Uh, so we're going to keep investing fundamentally into the business in areas where we put one dollar into the ground, we get three or four dollars back. That's that's the name of this business, right? That's why we're all here. Uh, we'll continue to do that next year. When it comes to the cash position, we added cash this uh, this past quarter as we've already released, which is great. We're sitting at eighty four million dollars in cash, uh, and next year our guidance is already out there from a capital program around about that hundred million dollars when it comes to sustaining growth and uh, exploration that will continue. What are we investing in next year? Well, at the end of this year, we'll have those three vent raises completed. And you know, it, and I would tell your uh, listeners to go back and watch some previous uh, uh, broadcasts to talk about why we're doing that. But we're expanding our production to 2 million tons per annum. Three vent raises are going in this year. All three will be online and commissioned by the end of the, this year. That then allows us to uh, get uh, our activities, uh, basically ramp up our activities underground, uh, both in terms of development for mining as well as exploration. So next year we're adding more um, development to bring more stopes online with the goal uh, by the end of 2024 of exiting at 2 million tons per annum, which is that annualized rate uh, for beta hunt alone of around you know, 165 to 180,000 ounces from a single asset. So that's what we'll be working on next year whilst uh, continuing to invest into exploration. How do you think that holds up against you know, some of the other kind of mid-tiers mid and other producers in, in the space? I mean, how do you compare, or do you compare yourself? Yeah, so I think it's, if you, if you run your finger down the list of our peer group, and when you start to think of junior to smaller mid-tier producers that are traded on the TSX, obviously there's, there's a number of them also traded on the ASX uh, predominantly there, and a couple over in, in the UK where you are. But uh, when you run your finger down the list, the number of single assets that have 10 plus years of mine life that are tracking towards that 200,000 ounces a year mark at reasonable margins, it's pretty slim. Now, when you run your finger down that list and you start screening for jurisdiction in which they're located, there's a lot of phenomenal assets out there. Uh, actually, I should say there are some, quite a few phenomenal assets out there that are in very challenging jurisdictions, um, for sure, in terms of political regime, uh, social changes. Uh, we're in Western Australia, uh, where permitting is permitting. We have a, uh, a local uh, Western Australian GDP that is driven by mining and resources, which is a phenomenal place to be. So you don't have too many assets like that, which is exactly what the mid-tiers need to have in order to continue their businesses growing, right? They've got to replace resource and reserve life in great jurisdiction. So how do we differentiate ourselves from the pack? I mean, by definition of where we are in terms of jurisdiction, but also the asset life and asset quality that we're building. That's, I mean, I've only talked about the gold site. Remember, as we talked about numerous times before, we've got this expanding nickel operation that's also there too, that's you know got a phenomenal byproduct potential. So it's a very unique asset that every single year that we keep drilling is getting better and better and better. And I am gonna mention one thing, uh, just being cognizant of the time here, uh, we have been putting out some phenomenal drill results this year, right? At Fletcher, at Mason, at Cowshill, at Larkin, 
I mean, earlier this year, we put out seven meters of 46 grams at Fletcher. We put out another 32 meters of five grams. We've got some very, very wide intercepts at phenomenal grades. We've drilled off the bottom 500 meters. None of those that I just mentioned, with the exception of Larkin, are going to be in the resource update this year. They just won't make it in there in time. That comes in 2024. So what I'm alluding to here is 2024 is going to be another good year of resource growth. And then there's also this other lever that we can pull, which is grade. So what we're starting to see with a lot of these drill results is better grades than what we're currently mining at Western Flanks and A zone. For four years, we've been mining only two zones at Beta Hunt, Western Flanks and A zone. We're seeing some better grades coming in. We're seeing certainly potential for more ounces coming in. So that's all starting to build into a really top tier for, you know, basically first class uh, uh, tier one jurisdiction asset, the kind that mid-tiers need because they're not discovering them on their own. They, they, they do need, and maybe that's a separate conversation with regards to, you know, all of these these mid-tiers building up cash reserves and they've got to replace uh, re, um, their, their own reserves, right? Um, so it's, it's, it, I think that's a fascinating conversation and saying, like, what do, what do people do? What do people like you do? What do they do? You're looking at people, people are looking at you. Um, but the, the, I think the interesting thing for me is what you said earlier about you're putting out these phenomenal drill results, but you're not getting credit for them, right? So do, what do you think people are judging companies on? I mean, if indeed they are judging them on anything, is it good grades from drill results? I'd argue not because you know they, they come and go, it seems. Is it going to be on the size of your resource, the, the average grade of your resource, contained min mineralization uh, in your resource? What what are you going to be judged on? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you... Uh... A little bit of a preview into the institutional side. So when we talk to our largest investors, you know, some of these groups own nine, seven, eight, five percent of our company, very, very large shareholders. When we have calls with them, the first thing they do is they say, Oliver, um, you know, want a quick update here. First of all, we're not worried about you guys. Um, this is an easy call. You're generating cash, you're building the business. This is phenomenal. Keep doing what you're doing. But the message from them is, or the questions from them are basically, what additional fundamental value are you adding to my investment position right now? So that is ounces in the ground. That is potentially higher grades. That's all the projects that we're investing in. So they know, even though the company's valuation right now, and everyone in the sector has been seeing some hard times, they know the actual fundamental value within that is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the opportunity when things start to turn is getting better and better and better. And what we've seen is a lot of those groups continuing to excuse me, continue to add at these levels. That's what they want to see. Our job is to continue to deliver and add fundamental value, make sure the message of what we're doing is broadcasted to the market and make sure that we're keeping everyone up to speed and allowing people to be informed with their investment decisions so that they make those investments and they have. And then when that when that sectoral flow comes back, right, driven by quant funds, driven by retail investors that are trace, chasing trends, uh, which are the ones that are coming from other sectors into the sector, that's when these, you know, there's there aren't many sellers left, and that's when these stocks start to rip. So that's uh, what we've been executing on. The business just keeps getting better and better and better. And with the whole sector, when things turn, it's going to be pretty fun. Okay, well, like I know you got places to be, uh, right? So I'll, I'll let you go. Like, appreciate the um, the update and a few things for us to kind of ponder uh, and dig into. So uh, we'll see you soon, Oliver. Thanks. Thanks.